and thank you for stopping by our first video for Simple Web Logic. Today we're talking all about salt. And I don't mean table salt. Now if you've had to build a server cluster in the past, you know it can be a tedious thing to do. Salt makes this so much easier. Now I'm pretty new to the whole salt stack myself, so this video is not meant to be the be-all, end-all instruction manual for salt. This is just a little taste of its power. So first thing, in this video, we're going to launch the simplewebLogic.com website. So when I first started with this, I set everything up as I wanted it, and I took notes of all the steps that I took to achieve the final version. Now, this might be a good solution for you if you're just getting started with salt as well. It does help you get your mind straight. So how I start is usually in the DNS. So I'll go to my provider, in this case is DigitalOcean, and I'll spool up a new server. As you can see, I don't have any. So I set up the configuration that I want, set the host name just as salt.simplewebLogic.com, select the little $5 server, put it in San Francisco because it is closest to me, uh, Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit, and we want some private networking and we will create this droplet. You can add in the IPv6 if you want. Uh, I didn't, don't necessarily needed it yet. So now that that's running, we will go ahead and create our DNS. So we will create a DNS for the domain simplewebLogic.com and we will point it to the proper server. We wanna copy this IP address and actually make salt go to that IP address. So now we have the basic DNS done. We need to update our registrar with our name servers. So you go over to your registrar, mine happens to be GoDaddy, go to settings and change your name servers here to match what they are. So we've got our basic DNS all done. I just need to wait for the droplet to be completely finalized. It looks like it is. So I will check my email. All right, so the email came in and I have my password uh, for my server. So let's go to the terminal. So ssh root at salt.simplewebLogic.com and with DigitalOcean you put in your password on root and the first time it wants it again so that you can create your own password. So now we are in the future home of our salt master. We just need to install salt first. So we do that by adding the salt stack repository. So add apt repository ppa salt stack slash salt press enter when it asks you to we want to update our apt and now that our apt is updated we can go ahead and install the salt master salt minion and the salt cloud so apt get install salt master salt minion salt cloud hit yes so now we have salt installed we're almost ready to start working on our salt stack itself there's one change that we need to make to salt and it's on the minion so we need to open up let's go ahead and clear our screen we need to open up etc salt minion so right here where it says master salt we want to change that to say localhost and then id salt.simplewebLogic.com and write and quit that and restart the minion just so we know it has taken effect okay so with that We've done all of the configuration that we need to do for now. 
So now we can start with the salt stack itself. Now many people have difference of opinion whether where when it comes to where to start this. Some say that the local computer is better while some say that the master is better. For me it really depends. Uh, being that one of the first things I do on my servers is re completely restructure the cell and create my groups and users, I tend to start on my local computer. And this is because it makes moving the configuration files for my Vim and shell easier and in a working state. So what I'll do while I'm on the remote server is to install git apt-get install git. Now some versions of Ubuntu already have this installed, which this happens to, and it might just be a digital ocean thing, I'm not completely sure on that. But it is already installed, so I don't need to. Uh, now is when I will move to my local machine to begin the actual development. So I am a Ruby developer by my day job. So in most of the videos, I will be using RubyMine. Uh, specifically to make it easier for you to follow along with what I'm doing instead of just using Vim completely. Uh, so we create a new project and open it up in RubyMine. I named mine SaltStack. First thing that we're going to want to do is create four directories. Keys, Reactor, Pillar, and Salt. Now Keys is where we'll create our digital ocean SSH keys. And we'll create a second set somewhere else as well uh, that is for our GitHub. So in the keys and the reactor folders, just create a file named .keep, right? And that's for the Git repository later because we're not actually going to have anything in either of those on our local machine as of yet. So first things first, and let's create our top SLS file within the salt folder. Now the SLS file is essentially a YAML file. So we'll do base, and we want to start off with the things that we want to install on every single server, so we'll just denote that with a star. And what are the elements that we want to do? We're going to have a set of requirements that every server absolutely has to have. These are going to be packages that we want every server we, we have installed on. Uh, we want to create our users. We want to do our SSH setup. And mine is going to be super simple we want to have some sort of logging and for me I want I want Ruby installed so I'm gonna build these five things for now so what we do is let's create a directory for each one requirements users SSH logging and Ruby. Okay, so let's start off with our requirements. So inside of our requirements, when you call something like this install requirements, it can be right here. You could have a requirements.sls, but standards dictates that you create a folder, and within that folder, you create an init.sls so our SLS is going to be super simple we want this is basically my essential essential packages okay and I want to make sure that these are packages that are installed and they are going to have the names I'm I want to make sure that bash is installed Vim Nox is installed. Python software properties. Software properties common. Apache 2 utils. 
image magic. So that is literally all I'm going to do for this file right here. So now we get to move on to my users file. So we're going to do the exact same thing here and create an init.sls. Now this, this file is going to be a little bit different in that it will use what we call Jinja. Now I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's what it looks like to me. This is eventually how pretty much all of my SLS files will be is by using Jinja and for that we will want pillars as well. So let's go ahead and get our pillar built first. Now I may not be using pillars correctly on this, um, but it works and it works well. So we create a top.sls again inside the pillar folder. And we're just going to leave it like that. And since we created a users, we are going to create a users.sls. Okay, so what we do here is users Justin. Full name is Justin. I want my UID to be 1010. I'm also going to force uh, my group ID to be 1010 as well, just by using that same number. Uh, shell is bin ZSH. Password, and you want to use a password that is on your on your machine so I've got a password here and the way that I created that was when I originally set up the server I created my user I set the password and I went to on Ubuntu it is under etc shadow is the file and your user will have the whole password string in it so you can grab it from there uh, the groups that I want this person to be a part of is sudo, adm, dip, and plug dev. I want to do some ssh auth. And I've got my auth keys here. So this one is for my MacBook that I'm on currently. But I also want to do one for my Linux machine as well. And user files enabled true so this is all I need for my pillar super super simple I don't do anything over the top but now we have the pillar ready to go and I can actually create the initialization script for the users Jinja is in syntax is very similar to some of the template engines such as like smarty or even twig like all languages it has an opening and an ending tag which is usually this right here you can also do minus we want to loop through so we want to get the the name and the full user in my pillar so now we have our basic for loop we're pulling the name and the full user out of our pillar if the user is user absent is not defined if user 
equals none, then set user, set user files equals salt pillar.get users name user files enabled false. We want to set home user.get home. And so what these dot gets is, so this is the key that I'm looking at getting, and if it doesn't exist, then this is what the default is going to be. Now I want to set my user group literally just to equal the name. All right, now we can actually start working on building something. So for group in user dot get groups or a blank list, then users name group and so with that we would now be building our groups if we ran this so now let's go users name user group dot present name user group GID is going to be user UID and now user dot present name it's going to be name home it's going to be home shell user dot get shell uid password user password full name and then we do our groups now if ssh off in user for off in user ssh off users ssh off name loop dot index zero and four and end if and so now the last part that we need to deal with in creating our user is our user files if user files dot enabled and if now my stuff is a little different than a lot of people at this point you might do like a recursive method but it doesn't necessarily work for what i need <coughs> not completely anyway so i opted to do it each file individually so we're going to do file build a folder in here called files so the first one that we're going to do is vimrc name file.managed name is going it's going to my home directory dot vimrc and the source is salt users files dot vimrc next I am going to install oh my zsh for this user, get dot latest name <clears throat> get github.com Robbie Russell O oh my ZSH dot git target is home dot O oh my ZSH and I want to require the user with name. Now we can do our ZSH config file.managed name home dot ZSH RC source is going to be salt users files dot zshrc and I want to require the user name now we can do oh my zsh theme file dot managed name is home oh my zsh themes xxf dot zsh theme and source is salt users files dot xxf dot zsh theme and again we're going to require 
that we have the user with the username of name. Let's go ahead and copy these guys right here. Okay, so that will do it for my users. So now we can move on to our SSH. We'll just name this Titan SSH. File.managed. Name is etc ssh sshd config. And the source is going to be salt ssh files sshd config. Pretty simple. Uh, if you want, you can add some root SSH keys here as well. Um, I'm not going to. Art restart SSH. Service.running. The name is SSH. Enable true. And I want to watch for changes in the file etc ssh sshd config so now we create this file so files go back to my folder pull my sshd config out and essentially all i'm doing in my sshd is removing root login possibilities uh, no empty passwords and disabling password authentication and then putting only my user as the allowed list. So now that we have our SSH configured, our next step is going to be our logging. So what do we have for our logging? Um, I use LogWatch. So we're going to do a init SLS here. So now the only thing really to do on this is to set up the logwatch cron tab. So let's go ahead and copy our cron.daily folder. So this is my my log watch. Simple, test it, mail. Okay, and Ruby is next. Now, you may wonder why I want Ruby on every single server that I have. And it's because of a gem that I absolutely love. So I knit dot sls yet again this one will have no files no jinja no pretty much anything so let's first set up the ruby repo because i want the latest version so package repo dot managed human name ruby ppa trusty name is deb so that will set up the Ruby repo. So package dot installed names Ruby 2.2 Ruby 2.2 dev and Ruby switch. We want to require package Ruby repo and command.run 
name ruby switch set ruby 2.2 require package ruby and last one gem installed name lolcat okay so this is essentially all I need in order to get this up and running we've gone through and we've done our requirements we've created our users set up our and toughened our SSH just a little bit uh, created some logging so that we'll get daily emails about the activities on our server and we've set up Ruby with the gem lolcat as well so what we do at this point is get init let's go ahead and touch a git ignore and crack it open here we don't want any DS store uh, we don't want anything from idea and that I think is it and get push so there we go now what we can do since we are still here we want to clone that now the standard salt directory is the serve folder so we want to get clone and so now we see that I've got this going let's just make sure that it's completely correct so we can do salt cloud state let's see uh, salt star state dot show high state oh I forgot there's one thing that we need to do salt key L and you notice that we have this one little unaccepted key right here we kinda have to accept that so salt key A salt dot simple web logic dot com yes salt key L and now we have it as an accepted key so now we could do salt star state dot show high state so now we see that it works as it should so we can actually do salt star state dot high state so it's taking longer that's a good sign actually and it will come back and tell us what is going on so I'm gonna pause this until it comes back okay <clears throat> So, I had a few bugs that I had to fix. So, as you can see, a few. So, let's push these up and pull them down here. So, if I head on over here, I should be able to salt.simplewebblogic.com and it should just let me straight in. And I've got my proper terminal setup so I am happy with that so now we need to figure out exactly what we're doing um, so let us go to our server now by default I'm not going to be able to modify this on this user so what I usually do is shown everything to my user So that I can modify it. Next, let's create our keys. So SSH key gen dash TRSA. And I want this to be in serve keys digital ocean. So here are my digital ocean keys. let's go to the salt 
so to our SLS. So now we've got the few things that every server needs to have. So what are we doing from here? How do we plan on setting up our full server environment? So the way that I do mine is I, I like to have one salt for basically all of my projects. So, which is why my personal git is called salt it all, because it literally will salt it all. Um, so I will, I will do like SWL, www star. And this is for a simple Nginx configuration. So Nginx. I will then do SWL app star. And this one, I will really just install Redis and SWL. And then usually I'll do like a development, but in this case, I'm just going to do single. And it will include Nginx. It will include Redis. And it will include SWL. So that is all I need for my top. Okay, so we are here. So let's first go to and do our Nginx. So we want to make an Nginx folder. We want to also do Nginx files so that we can put our configuration file in there. And I'll do that on my local server or on my local machine. And we want to vim nginx init.sls. Now you'll notice that I really only did the one Jinja uh, template so far. And that, that literally is specifically for the length of the video. Trying to do all of the Jinja templates and everything wouldn't necessarily be a short video. So let's do nginx. We want to do package installed uh, service running. Let's enable to true. And let's watch the file at etc nginx nginx.com. as well as the file at nginx sites enabled star. Let's configure nginx. File.managed name etc nginx nginx.conf and we want the source to be salt nginx files nginx.conf and that is all of our nginx configuration so next is going to be our redis and the redis is going to be very very simple so make the redis vim redis init.sls so redis server package repo dot managed so that we can add a new repo ppa chris lee redis server package dot latest name Redis server refresh true and Redis server running service dot running 
name Redis server. I want to watch the package of Redis server. And I want to require the package of Redis server. Okay. So the last step is going to be our SWL. So we go to our salt here and we have our SWL that goes both to app and to single. So let's make the directory SWL and let's go ahead and go to it. We're going to have some files here. And let's bring up our init.sls. So, being that Simple Web Logic runs on Rails, let's go ahead and make sure that Rails is installed. So, package.installed names. Uh, zlib1g-dev libxml2 2 dash dev lib my current server is running on sqlite 3 so we're going to make sure that we get that installed at this point SQLite 3 get a few gems that need to be installed and that is going to be rails and unicorn Now, I put all of my sites in www. So I want to file.directory. And the owner of this should be www.data. And the group of it should also be www.data. So www ppk.deploy.swl file.managed user www data source salt swl files github deploy key and mode 0600. That is the key, the second set of keys that I said we were going to make at the beginning of the video. So, SWL repo, git.latest. We want this to be run as www data. We want git at github.com choke simple web logic dot git that is a private repository uh, we want revision of master being that this is for production my development is in a different branch the target is going to be www swl site identity is going to be that ppk dot ppk dot deploy dot swl unless testy vagrant okay so now the next things <clears throat> that we will want to do so bundle install swl site 
command.run name bundle install and we want that to be run inside SWL site we want to also create our temporary directories cmd.run name rake temp create in the folder of www.swl site and the user should be www data create our log directory so www swl site log file dot directory make there's true and user now nginx swl site file dot managed name etc nginx sites enabled swl site dot conf and the source is going to be salt swl files swl site dot configuration and template is going to be a ginger template and next that I want to do is run my launcher. Um, being that I use Unicorn, I haven't been able to figure out a better way to refresh it after I've made changes than to literally kill all of my Unicorn workers and then restart it. So I wrote a little less uh, bash script in order to do that. So name launch.sh cwd swl site and the user is www data so now that we have this we want to ssh keygen and we want to save this into serve salt um, SWL files github deploy keys so one of the first things that we need to do with this is actually copy it right go to my repositories, where are they? Simple web logic right here. Go to settings, deploy keys, and I'm going to delete that one because I don't need it anymore. Uh, GitHub deploy key, name it whatever you want, and add key. So there we go. We've got that deploy key added in. We also need to do the same thing with our github key so I actually have that one let's go ahead and delete it so cat serve keys digital DigitalOcean.pub Add this SH, SSH key. We're going to call it DigitalOcean, just like the one I just deleted, and create the SSH key. 
this allows this key to utilize the API, which we will also need to generate a key for here momentarily. So let's see, what things do we need? So I need a files directory here so that I can move this nginx.configuration file into it. Super simple. Sets my workers, my users, all that stuff. And we want the SWL site configuration to go into here. So my Jinja part of this is in my upstream. We have this right here. So if not pill or SWL get app nodes, then we're running our unicorn on a socket. Otherwise, for each and every server in the app node, create a listener. So essentially we're load balancing on app nodes. And then of course, creating our main server. So since we mentioned a pillar here, I guess that means we need to create our pillar. So let's go back to the top and we're going to do SWL single because that's all I'm going to create right now. And I just want it to have access to SWL. So I will create a file, SWL.SLS, and this is going to be super, super basic app nodes. So with this, I should be set to be able to create a full server. That should be the finished salt configuration. All that really is left is to create the provider and the profiles. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our provider. So since mine is DigitalOcean, I do need to generate an API key that I can utilize. So generate a new token. We're just gonna call that salt cloud. And there's the key, it will only show up once. So you're gonna wanna save that. Okay, so I've got that copied into a secure text document. It's open for the world to see. So we want that to be etc salt uh, cloud dot providers dot d and we're going to just vim digital ocean dot conf okay so in this file it's again basically just a your basic yaml file we're going to do a do provider digital ocean personal access token Put in my personal access token ssh key name now one thing to note there's a lot of digital ocean videos or tutorials out there and it took me a while to figure this out uh, there was a warning that salt stack was giving me about uh, the switching to digital ocean v2 and to change the provider name to digital ocean but i was confused because my provider name was already digital ocean and so why was I getting the warning if I was already using uh, version two of the API? Well, the th difference is, is this key right here, personal access token. If you're using the, this key, personal access token, then you wanna be using version two of the API. Otherwise, you wanna be using version one of the API. Um, you should probably be using version two anyway, but now you know. If you get that error, just change that key to personal access token and you'll instantly be on version two. There we go. So now I've got that. So in theory, with that working, I should be able to sudo salt cloud list locations do, and it will show me all of the locations that we have now one thing that to note here um, we will want to s want to do this on DigitalOcean so that we can see this slug now a lot of the videos say you can just do San Francisco one in the names and stuff when you're creating the profiles 
I have found that that doesn't actually work. So I use this slug instead. So I'm going to be using SF01 in all of my slugs. You can also pseudo salt cloud list images do and literally get a list of all of the images in there. Um, I found out the version that I want to use and there's more there's more things that you can do as well. So now what we want to do is cloud.profiles.d. Now a profile is a configuration for the different sizes of instances that you want to spool. So the first thing we do need to determine is what sizes of servers am I planning to use for this project. After that, determine what region you want to use. Now, like I said, I'm going to choose San Francisco because it's closest to me, albeit it's not that close. I'm way down uh, right next to Mexico in California. Uh, so now we make some decisions on what images we want to use, whether you want Ubuntu, CentOS, or another, uh, even one with pre-installed software, such as a Ruby image, or if you're uh, a WordPress person, a WordPress image. I've decided I'm going to be running in San Francisco 1, running 14.04x64 with nothing special pre-installed. We want to create a digital ocean.conf. Okay, so I'm going to name my, my profiles based on the size of memory that they have and the locations. And last is the two gigabyte one. Provider do size two gigabyte. Image is Ubuntu 1404x64. Location is SF01. Private networking is true. Minion. is okay so that completes our profiles pretty pretty simple so if we save this file we're essentially ready to go we're now at a state that we can deploy one server or a cluster with ease now the only problem that we will have with this right now is that we don't have any way to automatically run. So how we do the reactor, there's there's a couple of different ways that you can that you can initialize this. You can put it directly here in the master file or you can put it in the master D file uh, for this because it literally is only going to be a simple reactor I'm going to put it straight into the master um, this may invalidate standards um, I'm not sure if it's against standards to do this or not um, so before you do it you'll probably want to just make sure so when we get the key salt cloud created and the star there stands for the minion that is happening we want to run reactor startup high state dot sls alright and that is basically it so now let's go vim serve reactor high state up startup high state dot sls and we can do reactor high state command state dot high state target data name and write and quit that now we have a reactor set up we should be good to go uh, completely done with our entire salt stack so let's give it a try shall we 
pseudo salt cloud profile equals SF two GB SWL single one dot simple web logic dot com and this will take a little while at this point it's connecting to the DigitalOcean API spooling it up spooling up a new server and then it will run the high state and configure it okay so we see I had a few more issues that I went in and fixed uh, just some little typo issues so I ran this command sudo salt call state dot high state on the minion itself and it gave me some pretty decent output I uh, was able to see what it's doing as it's doing it which I like personally and so now one of the only things that's left to do is our DNS now I haven't figured out A way to plausibly set up DNS on the fly as it's creating so I will just be doing that manually for now um, so we go back here to DigitalOcean we get the IP of the new server go to our DNS we want our simple web logic domain so change the at to that server there. And I want to create the www version go to the at. So with that, we go to the browser, we go to the website, we can see that it is in fact running. And so with that, this is the end of this video. Now, I hope that you've learned something about SaltStack today and hope you continue to learn more. If you like what you've learned or would like to learn more, please subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and of course GitHub. Link for all of those are in the description below. And again, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video on SaltStack, and we'll see you next week.